whoever sins against the true holy spirit will never be forgiven i am a member of the faithful remnant church of these end times in the holy bible we read whoever blasphemes against the holy spirit never has forgiveness but is guilty of an eternal sin for wisdom is a kindly spirit and will not free a blasphemer from the guilt of his words because god is witness of his inmost feelings and a true observer of his heart and a hearer of his tongue because the spirit of the lord has filled the world and that which holds all things together knows what is said therefore no one who utters unrighteous things will escape notice and justice when it punishes will not pass him by now jesus christ the most high true god has spoken from his throne in heaven to his two witnesses jesus said and i quote the bible was written in such a way that the words could be taken out of context and human understanding could be placed instead and the same goes for my testimony human understanding is very limited as to what the true holy spirit has to reveal is my holy spirit subject to man's laws am i to abide by the ways the will and the mindset of man not ever never will i do this for to do this is to go against my father who is in heaven i taught mankind to follow my ways by teaching them and by equipping them with the necessary tools to fight back their persecutors but instead they took the tools that i gave them to fight me instead bad move to use my words that were written in the bible against my testimony is blasphemy and will be punished accordingly for to anyone who adds or anyone who takes away the words from this book referring to the testimony i will take away their share in my kingdom of everlasting life and they will be blotted out for eternity whoever blasphemes my words and my testimony will not enter the kingdom of heaven will not enter into eternal rest but will be blotted out of the book of life for any sin can be forgiven but whoever sins against the true holy spirit will never be forgiven and why is this my son pope peter the last said and i quote because when a person judges the words of their creator as being evil how can they, how can they then turn to what they consider an evil in order to be saved they cannot and so blasphemy drives a wedge between the sinner and their only hope of salvation jesus continued the angel gabriel gave the best news of all announcing the gift of my birth to my blessed mother a gift to all mankind a gift offered for the forgiveness of their sins but as long as the people continue to blaspheme you both and my testimony then there really is nothing i have to offer them what is here in my testimony is for their well-being not for their harm the truth is uncomfortable embracing my cross all the way up to mount calvary was uncomfortable 
but I still did it. I went all the way. And so I expect my followers to do the same. To live a life of discomfort only consoled by the true Holy Spirit working in their interior lives. That's what I expect. It is what happened with the first Christian church. How everyone has strayed far, far, far away from true Christianity. They call themselves my disciples, but it is all a sham. Because when things get really tough, like now, in the time of the Great Tribulation, and when I am asking them to have faith in me and not the human structure, then they put the brakes on and say no. They refuse to leave their institution, as the Jewish leaders refuse to leave their perceptions of me behind them when the truth convicted them. In crucifying me, they committed the ultimate blasphemy. And now, history is repeating itself. Yes, it is. To call that evil a good and a blessing, just like Francis, to call that wicked Pope a good and holy man when he is nothing, anything but, is blasphemy. Now, I will let you listen to a portion of the homily from a holy mass offered by Pope Peter the Last. Today, the people are embracing the sin of blasphemy in their religious institutions, and all of the priests, ministers, pastors, and rabbis are tolerating it. How? Are the people embracing the sin of blasphemy in their religious institutions today, you might ask. The Blessed Virgin Mary <laughs> explains, The Blessed Virgin Mary said, Because they seek worldliness even in their institutions, they seek to be told that they are saved apart from the one that can save them. The Christians who call themselves saved are living a self-condemned lifestyle. Therefore, they embrace the sin of blasphemy, calling all their actions holy and good when they really are depraved and wicked, saying to themselves, God won't mind if I watch a few hours of television. He's got better things to do with his time. Or, I can look at this unclean picture in this magazine and it will not affect me because I am saved by the precious blood of Jesus. Or, I can entertain all sorts of evil thoughts towards my neighbor and God will understand because of the way they treated me. Or, how about this one, my children? I will spend my money on lottery tickets and casinos so that I can win a large fortune. God will understand. Does God understand all of these choices, my children? Yes, he does. He understands that people have chosen to deceive themselves and he is not buying what they are trying to sell him. Most of the thoughts that he hears are people justifying themselves as they embrace sins against him, as they take offense at him because he is the truth and they do not desire to live with a clear conscience in the truth.
Jesus Christ further revealed through his two witnesses. If they do not know that they are covered in muck and they call the muck they are covered in my Holy Spirit, then they have embraced the sin of blasphemy and have rebelled against my commands. For it is very serious to call something that is horrendously evil a good and to call something that is good and pure a horrendous evil. This is the sin against the Holy Spirit of which there is no forgiveness for. But I always allow souls to know when they are blaspheming or not. They will know in their interior lives. And if they refuse to repent and change their ways, then they cannot be forgiven of this sin. When the spirit of blasphemy is cast out, then you will be able to receive the truth even deeper into your heart, soul and mind. But until you persevere in rejecting the sin against the Holy Spirit, you cannot receive any more that I have to offer you. Now for the viewers of this video who are not yet a member of the faithful remnant, here are some facts. The abomination of desolation as prophesied by Prophet Daniel is fully set up in all religious institutions since the October of 2009. And everyone on the face of the earth, save the two witnesses and the children below the age of reason, received the spiritual mark of the beast on December 25, 2012, during the second coming of Jesus Christ, when he came like a thief in the night, at a time when the hearts of the people were farthest from him. The so-called Christians, in fact, are full-blown Satanists, because in fact they worship the absence of true Christ in all their weekly church services. They worship that desolation while committing the abomination of calling that desolation the Spirit of God and the abomination they commit is in fact the sin of blasphemy and that is calling what is evil good and holy. Not so for the faithful remnant because like the twelve disciples who were with God, we too are outnumbered by the religious institution of this time, a religious institution that Jesus Christ the Lord and only Saviour has now completely abandoned. I will end this video message with a closing statement from Jesus Christ the Lord, the Most High True God. Jesus said, and I quote, Can't my blessings reach across nations, my children? Therefore, I declare that those souls, as in individuals, who have seen your mass videos or who have read my testimony desiring unity with my divine will shall have their holy water blessed. If they acknowledge their true vicar, if they stop going to their institutions, and if they continue to read my testimony, I shall bless their holy water with the true Holy Spirit, that they may have this outward sign of defense against the enemy of their souls. For those who do not understand the use of holy water, Think of it as a desire to be spiritually cleansed of all filth and a desire for my spirit to dwell with you. The demons flee when you desire to clothe yourself in graces. For the waters have been turned to blood for many years now and there hasn't been any holy water on the face of the earth. But now there will be at my command. You just need a little container you can carry with you. Bless yourselves often. 
Repent of your sins and be purified of all evil doing. For my Holy Spirit seeks to dwell within souls who seek to strive for holiness through the use of this blessed holy water. And through your desire to acknowledge your true vicar in your hearts. I will ask the holy angels and they will remove the mark of the beast and a different seal will be given to you instead. Listen to Pope Peter, for I am with him. Do as he asks, for he represents me. For those who do not know me, come and learn. Ask questions in your hearts. Pray to me and I will answer you. But do not blaspheme my testimony nor my words. For if you do, you will not escape the second death. You will not escape the wrath of God the Eternal Father in heaven. Use the holy water, my people, and be released from the bee state. There ends the message. You can visit www.testimonyofthetwowitnesses.com for more details.